and uh, the, the point about we have uh, 40 minutes left, I'm going to do one quick, uh, one quick round here, but with the plea of relatively short answers, because I do want to get to the audience, because helping Ukraine, Peter, by, I think it is a key here. Right now, winter is coming, winter is here, may not feel like that in Abu Dhabi, but certainly in Berlin. Uh, we've already uh, talked about the failures on the part of some uh, uh, European governments to diversify their energy, uh, sources. Germany is now in a conundrum. The question I want to ask you is the support for Ukraine on the part of the German people is high if you're looking at the polls. But as the living costs are rising and the immediate impact of those costs are felt by the average person, do you fear that the support for this war or rather for the Ukrainian people is going to decline in, in Germany? Because that, that's going to be a litmus test here. Yeah, it's a very good question and certainly one of the things that any government, not only the one in Germany, has to take into consideration when shaping, forming their policies and making these political decisions that are necessary. I don't, I, I mean, it's a support as you quite rightly described for supporting Ukraine in this war with regard to financial aid, with regard to military aid, is very high in Germany and actually for politicians it's always a wise thing to really listen with all senses open um, uh, to those um, who they represent, to the people. And just to give you a little example of the very early weeks of that war, when in Germany, uh, after, the German, uh, after, the, 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 after the invasion on uh, February 24th, three days later, the German Chancellor delivered a fantastic speech with everything put in it, uh, you know, with regard to the so-called Zeitenwende, completely change in in our politics in Germany, and people ask on the street, Do, would you support deliver weapons, especially weapons, uh, to Ukraine? Because of our history, what I alluded to in my introductory remarks, because of we just don't do that, deliver weapons into war zones. German people said, well, we don't like weapons, we know we're more pacif on the, pac uh, on the uh, pac pacific side, but um, we think it's, it would be the right thing to do because we want to, I think the German the people, the society understands much better, maybe only from a gut feeling, maybe not only like intellectually reflected what needed to be done. So yes, support is high, but certainly that's, that's concern. We know not only have energy price is shooting through the roof and it's only just the beginning I have to say next winter the, by the end of next year will be much more expensive we have um, inflation rate um, in the double digit figures which is like around 10 percent in Germany uh, and many other things and this taken together it's really a challenge um, for any government be it on a federal level be it on a like more regional or local level to hold the society together. But, well, that's the responsibility uh, to communicate, okay, to explain to the constituents why it is necessary. Because of all the good reasons that I heard from the panel, um, it's not just about the Ukrainians, which would be a cause enough to, to, to support and defend. But it's, uh, you know, we, 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 we are fighting, the Ukrainians are defending our, ourselves here. And uh, let's be very clear, um, Vladimir Putin and Russia will not stop um, at the borders of Ukraine as a sovereign state. And I have not heard yet the, the, uh, the, the name of the Republic of, of Moldova, which are, is also a country, and the Baltic states, which are really threatened, not only since this year, they have really, they, they are, they, they are really uh, are frightened of what's, what's happening, and they have suffered a lot under, under Russian uh, suppression. So it's very concrete, it's very clear, um, and uh, that's the responsibility of those, all those uh, who have been elected into these um, top positions uh, to lead their states and hold the societies together in their own territory, but beyond their borders, within the European Union. And, and uh, really, I mean, European Union, there's so much talk all the time, not on this panel here, but, but you know, European Union, is this over? Does it have a future? And all this blah, blah, blah. I, 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 you know, why not giving the good examples of the European Union? It's, the, it's a guarantor for peace, stability and yeah. prosperity in the, in the so-called old continent. Very successful and it has proved to be just in that very situation what the senior advisor to the high rep said, just said. And that's true, it's not just like uh, wishful thinking, it's reality. But of course it's also here only the, just the beginning. 
we have to think about what's, what's, what's after that war, um, what, what, what is our concept, what is our idea, the vision for the next 30, 50 years of the European Union. We are a decreasing population, and, uh, but we are, we, we are also an economic powerhouse. And there's a lot of opportunities and options. We just need, and we'll finish with that, um, we have to look around for reinforcements of old alliances and we have to, you know, pursue paths of new alliances, be it in the Indo-Pacific or be it a, uh, in Latin America and elsewhere. Now, the, the rethinking part, obviously a very important one, not just uh, in Germany, but Europe in general. Germany will be interesting to see whether, as you pointed out, uh, Peter Bayer, whether it can shed its uh, pacifistic attitude, uh, which obviously <coughs> was, was in existence and in place for good reasons yeah. post-45, but these are different times now, which may require a different uh, attitude. Uh